Oh, hey there. Snuck up behind me, didn't see ya. I <laughs> uh, just wanna let folks know that today is the last day for the Be Able to Build Your Dragon t-shirt, this one. Um, so thank you so much to everyone who has purchased them. And especially thank you to the folks in Australia who have reached out to us so that we can get you guys your t-shirts and get that figured out. Uh, due to COVID, that's been a little bit of a cluster, but I think we're through it. So we've got plenty of money, it seems like now, to go buy the materials for the sail making, and we've got a little bit of the money towards the rigging, which is gonna be really great. Thank you so much, really appreciate it. And uh, if you're watching this video in the first, I think, 12 hours of it being uploaded, you can still go get a t-shirt. And if the video's already been up for 12 hours, well, you missed this one, maybe next time. Uh, so without further ado, I'll quit yakking and we can get to the normal program. Thanks. who's been helping Steve get Arabella's workbench together has one more day in the boathouse. The hope for this day was for them to finish up at least one full drawer, and I'll let you know that they got close. After Wes departs, some of the biggest items from the wish list finally arrive, and we'll take a look at those. And then Steve spends a week on his own, finishing up the joinery on the remaining four workbench drawers. On the right side of the workbench, we needed a frame member of some sort to uh, attach our drawer guides to. So I came up with a quick and simple half lap frame piece to attach to the bulkhead on the right side of the workbench. And then from there, I can, like I said, easily attach drawer slides. We're gonna have a bank of drawers that run down the right side of the bench. From my perspective, I feel like the workbench will be incredibly useful I have two workbenches myself. Um, the first one I made uh, several years ago and I made a second one because I wasn't happy with the first workbench. I'm still happy with it. It's still usable um, as a big shelf, but uh, the, uh, the second workbench is kind of a knockdown workbench, um, but it does have dog holes very similar to this. I have a front apron on mine. Steve has talked about some possibilities of potentially drilling into the uh, the dog hole supports um, and placing placing a three quarter inch hole there for some type of apron style clamp down. Um, but yeah, I think having drawers handy close by to a workbench area is incredibly useful. You don't have to just scatter everything across your bench. The more storage you have close by, the more likely you are to tidy up afterwards. Yeah, I'm very happy with how it's turned out. I think uh, Steve seems to be pretty happy as well, and that's the most important part. He'll be using it, I will not be. Um, but yeah, I think it's gonna be a good addition to the boat for him to continue doing some of the work he likes to do. Gotta clean up those corners a little bit. We are close. That would have been, you were working on it up there. You oh. came down into the boat. Yeah. Pulled you held it, marked it. Yep. Went back up to the vise, started working on it. Yep. Oh no, and this is gonna repeat it a million times. Yep. Like literally, probably a million times. <laughs> So here Wes is working on two pieces of cedar to go on the bulkhead side of the frame he made. Once fit, they'll make sure the frame is in parallel with the other side of the drawer gap. And Steve was sorting through Victoria's tongue and groove slats that will make up the drawer bottoms.
Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. Steve goes into much more detail later in the video on the joinery for the next four drawers, so if you don't know what's happening here, it will be explained shortly. Now that this is set up, I can pull an accurate measurement for the do drawers. Correct. We can start with the top one, get it made and installed, and then start building down and, yep. and kind of play with this. Yep. And then this sets us up real well for the other side because we figured it out. We get to do it again. I think it's beer 30. My stomach is growling. I feel like it's time to feed it. I agree. I'm I'm very hungry right now. And yeah, you gotta hit the day. bricks real early, so you probably want to get tools packed up and everything this evening, and so yeah. you can just get up and go. Exactly. Yeah. Probably leave uh, before the crows. Before the crows. I'll probably leave before the roosters wake up. The crows. That's mm -hmm. what I was trying to say. I want crows. I don't like crows. Can't <laughs> Got a couple coats of the teak sealer here on the workbench and I'm real happy with how it's coming out. We pulled out the dividers and those are getting their coats of sealer on them. We can get those installed and finish up the drawers. Uh, the reason we've been putting the teak sealer on the workbench top is because it's a workbench. Uh, so if we were to varnish it, everything would be pretty slippery and it's gonna get dinged up, it's gonna get dented, it's gonna get sanded and scraped and refinished. So the oil is great application for that. Uh, so we're just going to keep putting on the teak sealer until this maple stops accepting it. And the stuff's been air dried in the shed for over five years, so it is bone dry and just sucking it right up, which is really great. Uh, and the, I want to let you know that the camera work is going to shift very slightly here in the next minute. You might have noticed that when Wes was here, that Wes and I were working together and there was a third body out there holding the camera. And same thing when Robin and I were in vacation and we were visiting Norna and we were hanging out aboard with Pete and Courtney, there was also someone behind that camera. And lately it's been Anne behind the camera. So if you have been part of the, uh, the live streams that we do every month for the Patreon rewards, or if you have emailed with questions, um, you have communicated or heard Anne. So Anne is helping us out with all of that kind of thing, helping keeping us just organized on track. There's so many millions of balls in the air with everything going on with the project that she is basically our, our right hand Anne and uh, is helping us out with that. So she's been in town for the last week or so and has been helping out with filming but she's gonna take back off up to her family in Maine for a little bit, and I'm gonna be here in the shop for the next week by myself, which I'm actually looking forward to. It'll be really nice and quiet. Uh, so it'll just be me working and me filming. So if it seems like the camera work has changed a little bit and it's not quite as dynamic, that's why. Anne will be back in less than two weeks, and we'll get back to having someone else behind the camera, and George, who's one of our regular volunteers, is gonna be coming in to help out for a bit. 
So for at least the foreseeable future, we're going to kind of ebb and flow between a volunteer or two and Anne and kind of really busy boathouse for a week or two and then everybody disappearing and me being in here by myself for a week or so. And uh, we'll kind of see how that rhythm works out, but I think it'll be good for everyone and uh, I think it'll give a bit of variety to the videos. So if it seems like it's kind of changing and going back and forth a little bit, that's why. Have no fear. Uh, it's just the way that the work schedule is working out for everybody. We got our uh, little diesel heater here and we've got another heating element of sorts downstairs to show you. I didn't want to lug it all the way up in here quite yet. <clears throat> but major thanks to everyone who's gone to the wish list and donated towards these items. Uh, so this is the Dickinson Marine Heater uh, and this runs off a diesel drip. So we'll hook this up to the diesel tanks and when you want to warm up the boat it just is like drip 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 of diesel uh, and it burns it and that's all it takes. This will obviously have a chimney on it and it's made to get mounted up against the bulkhead. I'm not exactly sure where it's going to go yet. Uh, there's a couple places where it could go and we'll figure that out as the interior develops. And I know it seems probably excessive having a wood stove on the boat and having a diesel heater on the boat and having a galley stove on the boat. Uh, but I personally do not like the heat and I love fall and winter and colder climates and I love skiing and ice climbing. So Arabella will definitely see some colder places and we want to be well equipped for that. So the wood stove will be great to, to cook on and to use when we're near shore and the diesel heater is something that we can use more reliably underway and if we need to leave the boat for a little while this can keep going much easier than the wood stove can uh, so that's why we're looking to install it also it's it's not really that big <laughs> this is the uh, other i guess potential cabin heating item that we got very recently we got this mediterranean cook stove that is also made by dickinson the same folks that make that diesel heater and we went with the three burner model. So there's a bigger burner in the back and two burners in the front. And it also comes with this great maple top that drops in there. Uh, so you can use it as a cutting board or work surface. And of course it's got the, the holders for your pots. So those clip on back here. And we went with the gimbaled kit. So those will mount on the side you can see it's got the mounting brackets for it. And that way when the boat is healing, the stove can swing and stay level. Uh, and one of the features I'm most excited about is it has a broiler. Uh, so when I started looking for what stove to buy, there were a couple things that I really wanted. One was three burners, because I really like to cook, and there's very often you want to have more than two things going at once, and I really wanted a broiler. I couldn't imagine living with access to seafood and not having a broiler. Like That's like sacrilegious in my mind. Um, so of all of the stoves that had three burners and had a broiler, after all of the research and looking, uh, the Dickinson had great reputation and that's what we went with. I asked them for a second um, grate here for the oven. It only comes with one but I wanted to be able to do two cookie trays in there and I said that is there any chance that I could get a second grate so that I could cook twice as many cookies and they said yes cookies are important and they threw in the second grate so that was awesome. Thank you Dickinson. Uh, yeah, and it's going to be a little while before either of these go into the boat. Uh, I got to finish up the workbench, we got to get the head mocked up, get that wood stove in there, uh, and then at that point we'll really be able to define where the galley is going to go and figure out this. Um, but with everything being back ordered and all of that craziness that it's been the last couple of years, it's great to, to have these here on site. We can pull measurements and the second we're ready for them. They can go in. I can't, I can't wait to cook on this. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to make some delicious meals. So thank you, everyone. Really appreciate all the contributions. And uh, we'll think fondly of you every time we are uh, broiling up some scallops on this. <laughs> so this is Arabella's first drawer. 
And I've got one more little bit that I got to do to it, as you can see, but it is pretty much done. So what we've got going on here is it's a maple front and the rest of it is mahogany from Victoria. So the tongue and groove in the bottom here is from Victoria's ceiling and the liners inside lockers. And then the sides and the back came from uh, what I'm referring to as Victoria's bunk boards. So essentially they'd have the frame for the bunk and they laid some mahogany boards across that and put their mattress on top of that. So those boards that their sole purpose in life was to support the mattress were really nice pieces of mahogany. Uh, and that is where these holes are from. Is so these were in the middle of the board where you'd stick your finger through and be able to lift that board out. Uh, so one of those sections of bunk board made each of these drawers. Now there was some considerations in putting drawers into a sailboat. Um, one is that all of this wood is going to expand when it hits the water. So although the drawers in the workbench, you know, ideally they're never going to touch the ocean, um, just the moisture in the air, the humidity is going to be higher than it is here. So you expect all of the wood to kind of swell and plump up a little bit. And Victoria was a great kind of example of that. When we got Victoria, a lot of her locker doors, you couldn't actually open them. And if you did, you, you were really worried you were going to break something that you had to pull so hard. And after Victoria was here for a year, they were all falling open and the latches didn't even quite catch anymore. There was so much play in some of them. So all of that mahogany shrunk quite a bit. So we're expecting all of this wood to do the opposite, to swell. So if we were to make these drawers fit really nice and snug, like we would say for a house, I'm afraid that six months, a year after launch, you wouldn't be able to open them and they would be kind of like the ones in Victoria. So we made it so that the drawers themselves can expand and contract without ripping themselves apart. And if you notice, we also made it so that there's a decent amount of slop in here. Uh, so as the drawer swells and expands a little bit, as everything settles a little bit, uh, this should still give us enough play that we'll be able to open and close this drawer. And there's not so much play that it's not going to fall out or anything. Uh, it might rattle around a little bit, and that might be something we have to, to figure out. But I think once they're filled up with stuff, I don't think it'll be too bad. Uh, so yeah, that's the first one. That was kind of the, the proof of concept drawer. And next up is going to be making two more drawers below it. And then there's going to be two more over here to the left forward of the vise. Uh, we're going to get those made up as well. We're going to go into some pretty good detail about how we made these and uh, why we made them the way that we did. We elected to pick up some plastic. Um, so this is a very dense, slick plastic. And you can see that there's a notch here. And what that notch is for is a piece of maple that's glued into the side of the drawer. So right now, the drawer won't open, but if we lift up a quarter of an inch and pull, you can see that this little strip of maple here drops down into that slot and it keeps the drawer from going anywhere when it's closed. And then the taper cut onto the plastic here lets that drawer slide out really nicely. And when you go to put it back in, all you have to do is push and as soon as it touches that slippery plastic, it rides right up, goes back, and drops into place. So that's how we're keeping the drawers shut during just every day at Anchorage, coastal cruising when the weather's good. Uh, <clears throat> and we'll figure out a way to, to lock these really well when we're offshore so there's no chance of them coming up and out. And this plastic should make a really nice bearing surface for a long time. Uh, it should really, even when the drawers are full or things are maybe a little bit wet, should still let things slide and open up easily. So one thing I still have to do to this drawer is put an elongated hole here with a fastener so that these can't just slide out. So we want these to be able to move uh, so that when they swell that they don't just buckle and destroy the drawer. But we also don't want them to be able to just kind of fall out and work on their own. So what we'll do, is, like I said, is put a little elongated hole here with a fastener. 
and that'll go into the drawer back. And what that'll do is that'll give this just enough play that it can move in and out as it needs to and relieve that pressure as the, uh, the bottom of the drawer swells and shrinks. And this is a good instance here. You can see the dado that these drawers slide into, and there's a dado that the back slides into. And then there's a pair of little bronze nails in the sides. So one and two on either side. And then there's one more up front that pins these first two layers forward because these are what register that drawer front. And I'm not really terribly worried about these two shrinking and swelling. What we're worried about is the cumulative effect of all of these shrinking and swelling. So we have our little maple inlay there, and that's our catch. And if this breaks or gets damaged, that's a pretty easy fix. Uh, there's the one brad nail, like I said, that, that registers this bottom piece in into the, uh, the dado and keeps the front located. And there's two more in the back that hold the back on. But that is all the fasteners uh, and no glue for this drawer. And that way the, the data of the rabbits here will let this move and swell and shrink. The bottom can move and swell and shrink. And this drawer should, in theory, function for a good long time. There's going to be a pair of drawers, one that goes in either side here. And we've got where the dogs come through. So dogs, which we'll get into a little later, they're uh, basically jigs that go down through holes in the bench top. And some of them stick down, they protrude somewhat far. And also you want to be able to just clean these holes out because as you're working, you know, things are going to fall down in there, nuts, washers, little parts. Um, <clears throat> so we want a way to collect those things and be able to retrieve them and also be able to have the dogs stick down and through. Uh, we also need to be able to put the two drawers, so we need something in here to attach the drawers to. So the solution to that, at least our solution to that, is this. So it's just a couple pieces of the homemade plywood. And that slides on that. Now I'm just going to drill some holes down the sides and I'll pull it off, clean up the schmutz and fasten that for real. On the aft end of the bench, Wes had to create a little framework to go in here so that we were flush with the support that holds up the bench top and that it also brought us out a little bit so that we weren't rubbing on the bulkhead. And this is the same thing, and we want to make sure that we're missing this trim as well. But because this end is a lot smaller, I got away with just one good sized chunk of cedar. And just like the aft end, uh, this follows the deck beam, and they're not perfectly parallel with each other between the two bulkheads. They're cocked ever so slightly. So I have a quarter inch pad tacked to the corner of this uh, and that'll just bring it in just a little bit so that it'll be parallel with this side of the bench here. Cut those flush, and then we can put in the face piece. And then I think we're just about ready to go make some drawers. Okay, so let's see. So now we have nice, neat square boards. Everything's the same. And we can start cutting all of the dados to hold the bottom and the back and to cut the shoulders for the dovetails in the front. 
Right now I've got the blade, it's three-eighths of an inch away from the fence, and it is sticking up a little bit less than half the thickness of our board. And what this is going to do is we're going to run the board against the fence, and we're going to move the fence over a little bit, and we're going to end up creating a dado. And that groove is what the bottom of the drawer is going to ride in. So we're going to cut that the same on all of these drawers, regardless of their length or their width. Uh, so I'm just going to rip all of these right through and make that cut. Just going to move it over a little bit and take another slice. We got our dados cut. They obviously need to get cleaned up a little bit, but get the idea. So these will actually be going in like that, spanning across it. So now what I want to cut is basically the same thing, but in the end. Uh, and that will hold the, um, the back of the drawer. That'll be handy. All right, I think I got everything I need here. So, I get the grooves cut, the dados. So there's the one in the back where the back panel is going to go. And then there's the one across the bottom where that mahogany paneling that's going to make up the bottom of the drawer will go. And you can see the mahogany paneling will float all the way out to the back of the drawer and then our back of the drawer will ride on top of that paneling. So that'll keep that from falling through. And you won't see this little dado because that's on the bottom and in the back of the drawer. And then the camera battery died on me. And remember to pay more attention to that. Um, well you can see that I cut one tiny little slice on either side here. And that's at the front of the drawer. And what that is for is it's establishing the shoulders for the dovetail. But so what I did is just scored it and it's not quite deep enough, but what it does is it gives me a really great reference line to be able to put my chisel against and keep a nice straight line and make it a little bit deeper as I go. So I'm just gonna throw all of these in uh, the vise and I'm gonna clean up the rabbits. And then once the rabbits are done, I'll go through and clean up those dovetails. And those will just be by hand. Now we're established on the top, we are established on the bottom, and we'll just clean up those two sides until I can slide this fatter one down.
once the sides are uh, all cleaned up and the dovetails are made, it's pretty easy just to whip up the bottom here and get it slid in. So these are the two drawers for the right. Uh, I did those because I already figured out the upper drawer and I knew that these uh, slats for the bottom, these tongue and groove panels needed to be 14 and a half inches long to get the right width of the drawer. But I gotta figure it out for these sides. So step one, let's see what this opening is. So 19 and 7 eighths, 19, 7 eighths, and then 17 and 3 quarters. Okay. So that gives us the, the outer width of the drawer. Now we want a little bit of play in here, because if we built the drawer totally to fit and things swell, we're never going to get that drawer open. We also need to account for the thickness of the mahogany sides minus whatever we take out for the dado. So what we can do is measure this, take off our reductions for whatever we want for the wiggle room, and then we can measure this on both sides, deduct that as well. Or we can just lay this out with a couple framing squares and not worry about messing around with all of these fractions, and uh, that's what I did for the other side. So let's lay that out. So what we're setting up here is just a square kind of box that we can put these sides in and pull a measurement out of. It's going to go that way. What we're going to do is going to slide this right up against the ruler and right up against the square. And now that left one, what do we say it was? 19 and 7 eighths. So I'm going to bring this square over here to 19 and 7 eighths. Now we want a little bit of slop, so we are going to, let's see, let's add 3 sixteenths of slop, so we get a little bit of play. So that is the width of our drawer with 3 sixteenths inches of slop, which is a little less than I made for this drawer. This one feels a little loose, uh, so we'll snug it up a tiny little bit. So we can tuck that into the back of the dado and we can come to this dado. And we are going to be 18 and 15 sixteenths. Okay. So that'll be the left drawer. And we'll do the same thing for the other one. So now we can go upstairs and we can make up a pair of bases for them, bottoms. One needs to be 18 and 15 sixteenths wide by 16 inches long. And one needs to be 16 and 3 quarters inches wide by 22 inches long. Well, we got the four drawers here. So we got the bottoms and the sides for all of them. And the next thing to do is to cut the fronts and the backs. Uh, so for that, for this one, we want the front to land between the supports for the dogs here. So we're looking at 19 and a quarter, but we'll make the drawer front 19 and an eighth. That way we've got a little bit of wiggle room. And this one, we don't want to go all the way to the bulkhead because we're going to hit this trim. So we'll stop short of that. And that looks about 20 and 3 quarters should do it. Uh, and then for height, we want to measure the front of these. And we're going to add 3 quarters of an overhang. So this would be 7 and 3 quarters for the front. This one would be what? Gotta love fractions. Three and a half, four and a quarter. Uh, so yeah, pull those measurements and then the backs are even easier. So to go from 
the dado to the dado, it's the same width as the slats because I had the table saw set at the same depth when I cut those. So I already have all those dimensions. The only thing I need is height and we're going to be landing on the bottoms. So for this one, that's two and three quarters and I'm going to add on um, an extra three quarter of an inch to each one of these. And that three quarters of an inch will give us this little lip here and that fits in and helps fill up the gap where the, um, the rails are. All right, let's figure out where everybody belongs here. fit well. Alrighty, now to the fronts look. And you go there. Cool. Ah, those look good. Alright, I'm going to pull some measurements where these meet and I'm just going to go cut in some quick and dirty arcs. And then when that's done, I'll do some detailed work, lay out where those fronts are, figure out exactly where those dovetails need to be cut. I'm gonna cut those in the maple fronts. We gotta cut a dado in the maple for <clears throat> the mahogany to fall into. And then last but not least, we'll have to add the little stops. I'll have to do that before we finally put everything together. Uh, so little ways left to go, but we're getting into the final stretch. Force that. All right, same deal. Bad news, they don't fit. Good news is everything lines up perfectly. Uh, the dovetails are just a tiny little bit too fat. Uh, so when I routed these and when I routed the jig, I don't know, the bit must have moved ever so slightly or I, I had it in there ever so slightly different. Um, but all of these seem to be just like ever so minuscule, something like a 32nd oversized. Uh, which is a really easy fix. I just got to pop these all apart, give them a little trim, put them back together. Cool. Back in the morning with some fresh eyes, good night's sleep, and a full belly. And we've got the first one that fits. So I just took a little bit off the tenons on the dovetail, and that looks good. So the next step for this drawer is going to be to mark where the, uh, the bottom meets the front, and I got to cut a dado that goes across there. And I'm not going to do that on the table saw, and the reason is I don't want the dado to come out the side, because you're going to notice that.
These are the drawers. And the last thing I need to do is glue on the little maple stops and then they're going to be ready for sanding and sealing. Next week, George returns to help Steve out as work moves into other parts of the interior, as well as a side project that some of you eagle-eyed viewers might have seen in the background during the last couple of episodes. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that like button if your personal ethos will allow it, and we look forward to showing you more next Friday. <laughs>